Now, this video is for the uh, 320 of you that uh, viewed my last video. Um, not that many, but there's a few of you out there that are interested. Anyway, in that video I, uh, I promised to show how well the um, my latest iteration um, actually printed. Um, so, let's start with some pictures. Um, so here we are, on the left is my uh, test part, <clears throat> the original one that I did with the diamond, five colour hot end. And on the right is um, the same G-code file printed with my latest iteration. From the um, first test that I did way back, almost two years ago, um, I could see that pink was the was the kind of killer colour to see if it's mixed or not. Um, a combination of red and white seemed to show up the, uh, the striper toothpaste effect more than any other combination so that's why I chose pink. So just purely in terms of mixing you can see that it's um, it's trying. It's um, There's a fair amount of mixing going on, it's not perfect but it's, it's getting there. That stark contrast between red and white on the on the top layer um, confuses some people. I've spoken about it before. So here's another picture to kind of illustrate how that comes about. So basically it's related to the direction that the infill is progressing in. So if we start in in this corner uh, and the prints, uh, the infill is happening at 45 degrees like that, and then it, it it progresses from say that corner today. So the one edge of the bead that's being laid down is being supported by the previous layer of filament or the previous bead, um, but one edge is kind of open. So the infill progresses until it gets to this hole and then it carries on in the same direction until it gets around it uh, and then when it changes direction and the infill goes from that way to that way the other edge of the bead that's being laid down is supported and the other side is in free air so when what's coming out of the nozzle is stripy um, it looks like um, it kind of rotates or falls over as it's being laid down depending on which side of that bead is supported and so one colour is dominant and when you change the direction that the infill is progressing in then the other side of the bead is supported and the other side is in free air so the other colour becomes dominant and that's why you get this stark contrast on the top uh, I'm not sure of the exact mechanism whether whether it rotates or whether one side of the bead sags and then it gets covered up by the next bead that goes down. I'm not exactly sure how it happens, but you can definitely see that the colour changes depending on how the infill is progressing. I believe the later version of Prusa Slicer is there's a, there's a feature so the infill would always be laid down in the same direction um, because you can get a difference in sheen even when you're just using the same filament it's probably related to the same thing um, so I could fix that stark contrast but it still wouldn't be properly mixed um, at least not uh, not with the diamond it would all be all red or all white um, whereas that one is better um, but it still ain't right so it's probably fair to say that um, I, I could probably fix it by um, extending the mixing chamber further uh, by doing even more mixing. But there are downsides um, to using this hot end. And those downsides would only get worse um, the more complex or the longer the mixing chamber is. Um, so the first downside is just the time it takes to heat up. I'm using, um, on that particular one, I'm using an 80 watt 
um, E3D Super Volcano Heater which is 48mm long and it takes four to five minutes to get up to kind of 190 degrees from an ambient of 20. So yeah, I could improve that time by using a more powerful heater. Um, but the, the, the problem is it's not, it's just the mass that's got to be heated. If I put a more powerful heater in, all that means is that if um, a MOSFET failed, for example, and the, the thing was not controlled, then you could reach a dangerously high temperature. It could get to the temperature where aluminium melts or something like that. Um, and it would only speed the, the, the time it takes to heat a bit. It's just a big lump of aluminium that's going to take time to get up to temperature. Once PLA gets over about 80 or 90 degrees C, it starts to hydrolyze. That is, it, it becomes more and more runny. So after the first kind of minute or so of heating, the period of time it spends after that, the next three or four minutes, the filament is just becoming more and more runny, more and more viscous, or less viscous, I should say. Um, and it oozes. It just kind of oozes out of the nozzle because there's so much of it inside the mixing chain. So when you start a print you've got um, a lot of the filament has just run out of its own volition um, and what's left in there is very very runny so you have to do a massive great kind of purge before as soon as you finish heating just before you want to start printing you have to purge a lot of filament to make sure that, and then start the print straight away but that kind of needs leads on to downside number two because Mixing chamber is about 50, just over 50 mil long in total. Um, and to completely purge that, so for example, when you want to change colour, it means you've got to purge out everything that's in there before you start printing with the next colour. And typically you need three to four times the volume of the melt chamber to completely purge out one filament and fill it with another one which means I need to purge 150 to 200 mil of filament whenever I want to change colour. Now if you're just going to print, say you wanted to print a green vase for example by mixing blue and yellow, then that's not going to be a problem. Um, you just start printing green and, and that's it, you leave it at that for the rest of the print. Um, but if you want to do multi-coloured parts, which is what I'm more interested in doing, it means Every time I change for a different colour, I've got to do this kind of 200 mil purge. And the way I do it is move the print head away from the print and purge it into a, uh, basically into a bucket and then wipe the nozzle and then resume the print. <clears throat> but it still takes time. That's quicker than printing a purge tower. Um, but it still takes quite a bit of time and it wastes a lot of filament and I mean FDM pro printing is a slow process anyway so don't really want to slow it down even more or not drastically even more um, but yeah if, you, if you're doing you know if you've got two, two or more colour changes on the same layer it's going to waste an awful lot of filament and take an awful lot of time So that was downside number two. And then downside number three is um, it's again t to do with oozing but also lack of detail. Um, it oozes like hell and, it, and it's just related to the volume of filament that's molten filament that's in there. And you need a massive amount of retraction and or pressure compensation to to tame that so much so that you end up pulling up filament up into the heat break where it can congeal and block the heat break but if you think about um, a conventional hot end that's got a very small amount of um, in the melt chamber so you've got rigid filament coming in at the top and molten filament being squirted out the nozzle at the bottom but there's not much um, not much 
in between the nozzle tip and the rigid filament. When you put a great big mixing chamber in between the two, you then introduce a big mass of molten filament, a large volume of molten filament, which acts a bit like a sponge. Um, it seems to get, you can compress it and squeeze it. If you've got short, sharp extruder moves pushing cold filament in to this squidgy mess of molten filament, it doesn't, that's then got to go through a mixing chamber, it doesn't relate to a short, sharp increase in filament coming out of the nozzle. The volume of filament and the mixing chamber just kind of damps that out, so all you get is like a pressure, a short, sharp pressure increase. But it takes time for that to have an effect on what comes out of the nozzle. So you, you basically lose so much detail. Um, so it, it, there's another way of illustrating it. Um, the, the column on the left is some real life values for extruder moves taken from a chunk of that same G code. And then on the right, what I to simulate what happens with this, um, the damping effect. Um, I've basically taken 0.2 of a mil off of the longer moves and I've added 0.2 of a mil to the short moves because that's kind of what happens. It might not be 0.2, it's just an arbitrary number I fix, but um, you push filament in and you get an increase in pressure. It takes time for that increase to go through the restricted melt chamber and whatever and end up coming out of the nozzle. So effectively what you get then is well, longer moves tend to be under extruded because you get this kind of increase in pressure but it, it hasn't had time for the pressure then to equalize. So then when you get a short move you get over extrusion because you've still got some of that residual pressure from the previous move. And pressure compensation would only work to a certain extent. If you get a you know if you get a series of very short moves, you get a very series of very short pulses, which has a cumulative effect. Um, so it, it it basically becomes untamable. In a nutshell, I've, I've I've come to the conclusion that if you introduce a mixing chamber between the cold rigid filament coming in and the hot molten filament coming out of the nozzle. If you introduce a chamber in between there, whether it mixes or not, you've just got this mass of uh, molten filament that's going to act like a sponge. And it will simply damp out any short, sharp extruder moves. And you just lead to an unaccept unacceptable loss of detail. So I think a, a, a true mixing hot end can only really work where the filament flow rate is pretty constant and it has time to equalize all the pressures and so forth. So something like a vase um, and again just in one color so you don't have to change your color. But that's not really what I want to be making. I want to make multicolored parts. And I think that the same thing extends to uh, basically any, any kind of mixing chamber that you put between the cold filament coming in and the hot filament coming out, even if you had a um, like a, an active mixer with a stirrer in the middle. Uh, it's probably why the only examples I've ever seen of people that claim to have fixed the mixing um, are just simple vases where the flow rate is pretty constant and there are no colour changes. Um, but that ain't what I want to do. <laughs> I want to print multi multicolored parts um, quickly. Uh, I could be wrong, of course, but that's the um, conclusion that I've come to uh, after my two years of testing and so forth. Um, so yeah, it's probably possible to passively or even actively mix filaments together to get um, say green by mixing blue and yellow but it's only practical 
if the part that you're printing um, doesn't have a lot of detail um, and the flow rate coming out of the nozzle is therefore fairly constant and the pressure and, and, and stuff inside the mixing chamber remains fairly constant and has time to stabilise. So if anybody wants to uh, pick up the baton um, then it's I can say what I've tried because these things don't work so if you see any clone designs appearing um, with what I'm about to show you then you know that they don't work and save you money <laughs> so this was um, this was what was inside my latest attempt um, this is something I scraped off the internet a helical static mixer um, and here's and here is my attempt at making one so it's formed from a, a strip of brass about 2mm by 0.4mm um, and the theory is and, and as you can see it's kind of twisted and the theory is you, you kind of take the incoming filament and then you, you chop it in two and then each half gets twisted 90 degrees and then it gets chopped in two the other way and each of those halves get twisted 90 degrees and then it's chopped in two at 90 degrees to that again and you keep chopping it and twisting it as it goes through um, which sounded like a you know a sound principle um, that's what I used um, I mine ended up 48 mil long which coincidentally was the same length as um, an E3D super volcano heater cartridge which was quite nice um, but that was like six twists and splits so it's possible that had I used 8 or 9 or 10 or 12 or something like that then I would have got better mixing probably to an acceptable level but for the reasons that I've just given it's not practical um, I can't practically print with this hot end making it any bigger or more complicated will only make those matters worse and then other things I've tried are basically using um, a series of plates but like this one uh, so you can see the filament that's still stuck on there uh, plates with holes and slots milled in them so uh, the filament sort of comes down and then it uh, twists 90 degrees and goes along a slot for 2 mil, and then it twists 90 degrees and goes in that direction for 2 mil, and then it twists 90 degrees and goes down and then on the underside of the plate there are more slots twisting it and moving it and then going down and then stacking several of those plates together um, forms a complex kind of three-dimensional matrix um, and it doesn't work either but it was worth a shot so where does that leave me well um, all is not lost um, so what I have decided to do is basically just give up on the mixing um, but retain the multi-input um, hot end which would combine filament but I can easily switch between them so I can do multi-color prints um, up to six different colors by loading six different filaments um, I just can't mix them well I can but they'll look different depending on what angle you do, or I can use um, transparent filament which masks the stripey toothpaste effect. Um, so I basically this this will be the uh, the final hot end that I'm going to make. It's pretty much the same as the last one except I've just taken the mixing chamber out and I've abandoned the um, the separate filament because there's a straight part all, all, all the filaments have a straight part to the nozzle so I don't need to use a separate one so I can retract them all together um, so basically it's just a combining block where I've got the 
six inputs and they are all at compound angles and they end up at a common point of this kind of here and then I've got a block um, which will have the heater and thermistor in it and then another block which um, is only because I can't tap right to the end of a blind hole but the nozzle will screw into that so that will be my that's the hot part of my six input hot end um, heat brakes go on there and then the cooler block and the mount uh, will go on the top and that will be the um, the entire assembly so I'll end up no better than the diamond in terms of mixing um, but compared to the diamond I can fit any nozzle I want um, so I could I could print with abrasive filaments if I wanted to which is something I can't do with the diamond because it would wear the nozzle out and I can't easily change a nozzle um, or I can use some exotic nozzles if I want to um, and I can change a bit like a like my friends at um, <coughs> Slice Engineering that make the Mosquito, um, I can easily change the nozzle um, one-handed, if you like, with a, with a tool. I don't have to, the, because the heat brakes aren't structural elements, and there are six of them, um, I don't need to support the, the hot end when I unscrew the nozzle, I can just unscrew it. So I can quickly and easily change nozzles, which I can't do on a diamond. Um, and also being liquid cooled, it's um, silent, whereas the five color diamond has a massive, has to have a big fan, which is noisy. Um, and it's so, and also for the same thing, it will be smaller. So it'll be smaller, a little bit lighter, but I don't really care about the weight. Uh, it'll be six input instead of five, and I can change the nozzle, um, but it won't mix. But there we go. I gave my best shot, um, and um, that's where I'm gonna. That's where I'm going from now on. Thanks for watching. Hope uh, hope it's been useful. Um, even if it's just to say, don't waste your time like I have.